There comes a time in every medical commentator's life where he has to talk about vitamin D. I've been dreading this for a while. Here's why. Number one, structure. Vitamin D has a steroid-like chemical structure, which means it exerts its effects in the nucleus of the cell. As such, you can make a host of arguments about what effects it might have. After all, it changes the expression of DNA. And believe me, researchers have made a host of very difficult to analyze claims about the potential benefits of vitamin D. Number two, measurement. Typically when we measure vitamin D, we're measuring the total amount of the inactive form. Even the active form, though, is bound to something called vitamin D binding protein, which renders it inert. It can't enter cells. There are multiple subtypes of vitamin D binding protein, and each of the subtypes have their own affinity for vitamin D. Confused yet? Number three. Observational studies of vitamin D have in general showed way more benefit than randomized controlled trials have. And this is likely because you can get vitamin D from a healthy diet or from getting out in the sun every once in a while. Two things which are likely to provide more benefit than vitamin D itself does. So you really do have to look at randomized trials to figure out what's going on. And that's what Dr. Usi Rossi and colleagues did in an article appearing in JAMA Internal Medicine. They wanted to know if women who took vitamin D supplements would have a lower risk of falls than women who didn't. So they took 409 Finnish women, all between the age of 70 and 80 years, who had had a fall in the past year and randomized them to receive vitamin D supplements or placebo. There was also an exercise arm of the study where the women would get an exercise program or no exercise program. In the end, no effect whatsoever on falls in any of the intervention groups. The women had on average one fall per woman per year. Now, the exercise group had a lower rate of injurious falls, but there was no signal from vitamin D. Secondary analyses did show that vitamin D improved bone mineral density at the hip, but also that vitamin D supplementation slowed the walking speed of women who got it, and that's a concerning finding that needs further workup. Here's the thing. The mean vitamin D level in this trial was 27 before any supplementation happened. That's on the low side, but really not very bad. As evidence is coming out, it's becoming clear that supplementation of normal vitamin D levels is unlikely to show any dramatic benefits. With that in mind, my advice is take the money you'd spend on vitamin D, eat some good food, go to the gym, and hey, get some sun every once in a while, even if you live in Finland. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.